Um, I actually might agree with something Governor Gavin Newsom is doing. Oh, shock. Hey, this is called undivided for a reason, right? Don't hate it. Now, I don't necessarily agree with his logic behind it. I don't necessarily know whether it will accomplish anything that he's saying it will accomplish. But Governor Gavin Newsom is proposing a 28th Amendment to the fine constitution of ours, and it has to do with gun control. Here's a little campaign type video he put out. Every time it's the same. They tell us we can't stop these massacres. They tell us we have to stand by and watch tragedy after tragedy unfold in our communities. They say we can't stop domestic terrorism without violating the Second Amendment. And the thoughts and prayers are the best we can do. I'm here to say that's a lie. In this country, we do have the power, the power to change things, to reclaim our freedom from fear. Our ability to make a more perfect union is literally written into the Constitution. So today, I'm proposing the 28th Amendment to the United States Constitution to do just that. The 28th Amendment permanently enshrines four additions to the laws of our land. It raises the minimum age to purchase a firearm from 18 to 21. Because if you can't buy a beer, you shouldn't be able to buy a gun. It mandates universal background checks to prevent truly dangerous people from purchasing a gun that can be used in a crime. It institutes reasonable waiting periods for all gun purchases, and it bans civilians from buying assault rifles, those weapons of war our founding fathers never foresaw. This will guarantee states as well the ability to enact common sense gun safety laws. So, okay, first of all, Gavin Newsom, just run for president. We know you want to. We know, you, we know you're gearing up for it. We know you're just waiting for old Joe Biden to say he can't actually follow through with his second term and you're just going to be there waiting, waiting. Um, it's so obvious at this point. But I, I don't, I do not hate this route. I've said this before. Now, I'm not a gun person, but I am a constitution lover. And I don't like the fact when you have state governments, for instance, slowly trying to chip away at one of our constitutional rights in the Second Amendment. Just like I would have a serious problem if they tried to chip away at our rights in the First Amendment or the Fifth Amendment or the, or the Eighth Amendment. You have amendments to the Constitution that were written, you know, the quartering of troops. I mean, that was written at a much different time in America, but it's not as if we'd do away with it now because it was written so long ago that aspects of it aren't relevant anymore. It's not like we'd do away with that and say, okay, let's just hope the government doesn't get any ideas about, you know, forcing us to house troops. The, uh, the, uh, the amendments that have to do with whether women and people of color have a right to vote. I think that's the, the, those rights are probably pretty safe in America, but it's not like you do away with those amendments. And so what I've said about people who don't agree with the Second Amendment and who want to try to, you know, fudge it, fiddle with it, I've said, you know, have, first of all, repeal it if you don't like it. There is a process in place that is in line with the Constitution to either add amendments, to get rid of amendments. And as long as it's done in a constitutional matter, and if at the end of the day, it's the will of the people, who am I to say that's not the right thing to do? It is a very difficult task to get an amendment ratified, just like it would be to, to remove an amendment from the Constitution. It should be difficult. We shouldn't want the Constitution, this critically important document that guides our rights as Americans, we shouldn't want it to be easily altered based on what political party is in charge, based on, you know, constantly changing public opinion. We should want the process to be very, very difficult so that efforts like this don't happen all the time. So the Constitution isn't some, like, constantly changing document. So look, I would rather have an effort to change the Constitution than dozens of efforts a year to try to erode an amendment. Because once the government fiddles with one amendment, what's stopping them from fiddling with another and stripping out our rights in the other? And as someone who has made a living off the First Amendment, am I currently exercising my rights in the Second Amendment? No. But, but if I support the erosion of those rights, who am I to defend my rights under the First Amendment to do this podcast, to give my opinion on, on politicians? 